Dallas Morning News joins me now with the latest. Good evening, Avi. Where is the family who lived in that same apartment with uh, Duncan? Last I heard, we don't know where they are at the moment. Yesterday, they were moved from the apartment where he fell ill and where they were confined for several days to an undisclosed gated house somewhere in Dallas County. I'm sure there's people trying to find that house right now. Okay, uh, so I don't they're, know they're, are they, they're in a private home. Is that what you're saying? That's what we were told. That's the, pu the public was told that they were moved to a private home. Okay, and is the family's apartment the only one in that building that's being quarantined? As far as I can tell, it's the only one that has a guard in front of it, or had a guard while they were there, making sure that nobody knocked and nobody came out. I've heard that there are other people who stayed with him while he's ill that have uh, semi-voluntarily confined themselves to their own apartments in the neighborhood, but we don't know where those are. All right, and uh, how angry are people down there about the fact that he was sent home from the hospital and he was vomiting all over the parking lot in that apartment complex? I've heard a report that he vomited in the parking complex. Um, I, I haven't confirmed it to my satisfaction, but there's a lot of people who think that happened. Uh, if you, you're talking about ja Dallas generally, um, kind of the, the closer you go to the epicenter of this thing, the more nervous uh, people are. You know, I'm in downtown Dallas where I live. People joke casually about it or they're not talking about it at all or they're in sort of a calm wait and see. Right. When you move into... Mm -hmm. Abby Sell, thanks so much for joining us. With me now, the executive director of the Center for Immigration Studies, Mark Krikorian. All right, good evening, Mark. Why doesn't the United States have a travel ban on Ebola-infected countries? I have no idea. I mean, literally, like you said in your opening, why are we even having this discussion? It seems to me it should have been the first thing we did. It's not a silver bullet. It's not going to fix everything, but it's the first thing we should do. And look, these are three small countries, Liberia, Sierra Leone, Guinea. Uh, it's, it, it has no real effect on us if we do it. It's not as though we're banning travel, say, from Canada, which is a big country next door. Millions of people go back and forth. These are three little countries. Prohibiting travel from these places has no effect on us except with this disease. It may actually protect us. The idea that we are even having this debate is absurd. And, and, and the quote from the White House said it would be counterproductive to the economy of Liberia when the risk is to Americans. I mean, what, is it, what does it make you th think? I mean, you know, the thing is that President Obama is not president of the world, he's president of the United States. And I think there are too many people in this administration and, you know, in government in general, who see themselves as kind of citizens of the world and their responsibility is to everybody everywhere, not to the people who actually put them there and pay their salaries. That's the point of the government, is to protect the American people first. All right, and uh, tell me about the visa process. It's my understanding that if you're, you're in Liberia, you can actually get a visa in no time. Well, it's, uh, I actually looked it up on the State Department website. You do have to submit the application a couple weeks ahead of time, but then in two business days, maximum two business days, you actually get the visa. The interview is like, Two minutes, one minute, something like that, is you interview with the person. So it's, you know, it's uh, actually not all that big a deal to get the visa. This guy got it, um, and in fact, from a Liberian newspaper report, it looks like he got it, and then he quit his job once he got his visa, intending to come to the United States. So, I mean, there should be no visas issued. There should be no travel from that country to the United States, period, until the outbreak passes, and then we can start it up again. Look, judge. A Democratic congressman, Congressman Grayson from Florida, two months ago wrote to the State Department saying we need to ban travel from these countries pronto to protect the American people. And they didn't do it. This isn't even a partisan thing. This is a common sense, obvious step that this administration simply refuses to even consider. Do you buy the argument that the administration is making that, that although they say that, you know, these people are screened once they come through the border, which is hogwash to me, but they say there's plenty of opportunity for Ebola to come here and therefore, you know, closing off this country uh, 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 to Liberians who would travel here uh, doesn't matter? That's absurd. If there were that many opportunities, how come this, this is the guy, you know, this is the first time we've seen it happen? And 
if we had had the travel ban in place when this Democratic Florida congressman demanded it two months ago, this guy wouldn't be here either. Because it's not like he snuck in from Mexico, and there are, mind you, significant number of people from these Ebola-affected countries illegally being caught, illegally crossing, being caught by the Border Patrol. But this guy wouldn't have been able to come here. He's not some master criminal. He just got on a plane and came to the United States. And what about uh, the fact that he is here on a visa, assuming that he lives, although he, it appears he's in critical condition this evening, assuming that he lives and he does survive, I mean, his visa could be revoked and he could be sent back home for lying in uh, Liberia, according to the president there, uh, and also, um, you know, for coming here, uh, having lied over there. I mean, could we send him back or? Of course, of course we could, but you know what? I'm betting now, and this is on tape, so you can hold me to it. I think we're going to probably give him some kind of political asylum or something uh, rather than send him home. I think that's actually pretty likely. We could send him home. Of course we can. He's a, you know, he's a foreign. He doesn't even have a green card. He's just a tourist who lied in order to get into the United States. But I don't think he's going to end up actually going back to Liberia. Okay. And, you know, it's, it's, people are saying that this is, uh, he, he came here to marry his girlfriend, uh, and yet it's his first time he's ever been in this country. So, uh, you know, you have to wonder what's, what the backstory is here. Mark Krikorian, thanks so much for being with us this evening. Thank you. All right. And up next.